I'm sure you can all see what that is. It looks uh, pretty much like a house cat. And genetically, there's not, well, hardly any difference really between your African wild cat, this one we're looking at now, and your house cats. They can interbreed quite easily. There are a few very small uh, differences. The tail tends to be a little bit shorter on your African wild cat. We are looking at it in infrared light now, which is why it's still sticking around. If we kept the spotlight on it, it would have run away by now. So this cat is not aware of the fact that we're actually looking at it. But uh, if we could see it in daylight, you can see a little bit of a darker area around the neck area behind the ears. Just when it turns again, you'll see it. You can see that. That would have a reddish color to it in daylight. And also the relatively long legs. So it looks like a pretty sort of pure African wild cat, but essentially they are pretty much the same really as, as most of your domestic cats. Very special to see one of these. I don't know, Jan, when last did you see one? Months, huh? Yeah. Months. I think I, I saw one sometime last year, and probably only October or something like that. It's not often that you see them. At the moment also, summertime, obviously, there's so much grass around that uh, you don't see these smaller things too often. This one, luckily for us sitting in an open patch of sand here, what we call mitre drains, these little ditches that help to take runoff water from the roads, and that's why we could see it, because it's sitting on that patch of sand. This is very cool. Again, the infrared really coming into use here. Like I said, if we kept a normal daylight spotlight on this cat, it would have run away by now. Look at the pupils as well. You can see they're not really dilated. They're quite wide open, showing again that it doesn't have any white light coming onto the face. Oh, and it's going to catch an insect! Oh. oh, that was close. Look at that, quite a long-legged cat. Oh, Very quick, I mean, one minute busy grooming itself and the next just springs into action, but I think that insect has managed to escape. Quite a young cat as well, actually, looking at it now. wouldn't say a juvenile, but I'd say probably only a year and a half old, maybe. Two years at the most. Oh, nice stretch. Classic cat pose. Yeah, this is fantastic. It really is very special to see wild cats. I, I know I've said this a few times, but you could go for months out here and never see one. And then when you do see them, normally it's just a quick glimpse of them running through the grass or disappearing again. So to see this stretching and grooming and chasing an insect out in the open like this or in this little opening in the grass. Again, this is the element of the surprise. The fact that we don't literally know what we're going to see next while we do these drives, it makes it very exciting. Yeah, yeah, see if it just it suddenly strikes for an insect again. Good night for hunting as well, for, for your variety of predators really. You can see by looking at the grass that there's a quite a bit of wind out here. Strong breeze really, not, not really wind, but enough of a breeze to give you to give you quite a bit of camouflage, both in the terms of, of the grass's movement, all the plants moving around makes it easier for predators not to be spotted when they move. But also of course in terms of sound get this soft little like, sort of rustle almost beautiful sound that you get when the wind blows but that again would also help to hide the sound of a predator moving and a little moth maybe too small to uh, there's a bit of interest you see the cat just looking over obviously phenomenal night sight as well keep in mind that it's not pitch dark. I can see a little bit of the grass. I can't actually see the cat with my naked eye. I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing at the moment. But there is still a bit of a glow in the horizon as well. So to that cat, it might as well be daylight. It can see very, very well around it. Or around itself. And of course, also utilizing those ears.
just listening around, just seeing what might be rustling in the grass, something that it can then pounce at. The African wildcat does have quite a varied or a wide variety of foods in its diet. Um, obviously they will eat um, mice, shrews, small rats, squirrels, not that squirrels are that active, active at night, but maybe early morning, late afternoon. So they'll definitely go for, for your smaller mammals. They will also eat variety of bird species, everything from the very small little birds, uh, cysticulas and waxballs, up to larger birds like Franklin's probably and guinea fowl as well. But they also supplement their diet, like a lot of animals actually tend to do, even leopard will do that. They'll also supplement their diet with uh, different insects. Summertime there's a lot of insects around, grasshoppers and uh, I'm not quite sure what it went for earlier, it was some kind of flying insect, a moth maybe, termites even. So a very, very um, broad uh, sort of food base that, that uh, wildcats utilize. A bit of a yawn there, I think it might move on soon but <laughs> at the same time we've spoken about patients once or twice today, this cat could sit here for another hour easily. very reluctant to leave this cat. I think we'll spend a bit of time here even though it might be slow for a little bit but uh, like we saw earlier anything could... oh look at that it's just spotted something almost moved but uh, it could be months before we see a wildcat again so um, we're gonna certainly make the most of this. Look at it look at the perfect little pause there you can see the four toes facing forward the pad is the miniature version of a lion or a leopard track Again, like house cats do, like leopards do, like lions do, always grooming themselves, keeping themselves nice and clean. And the African wild cats are solitary, so they don't have the benefit of aloe grooming like lions might have, where they help each other groom. So they've got to be able to reach some way or another all the different parts of their bodies. You can see they're using the paw to clean the face. It's actually licking the paw to get it wet and then it's using the paw like a second tongue to clean the head and the face with. <laughs> the reason I say it's still a young cat that is that it's slightly more slender than typical for adults. So I wouldn't say juvenile anymore, but just a young adult. And also the head is still relatively small, quite a pointy face. So this cat will still bulk out a little bit over the next year. Also, of course, do all kinds of contortionist type tricks. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Look at that paw again, eh? Perfect, perfect cat track. You can even make it out from, from here. Look at the pad itself. We always mention that cats at the back of the pad or the heel part of the, the pad of the foot there. You can see it as well. <laughs> Show off. You can see those three lobes, typical of all your cat tracks. <laughs> 